Banjo. Man, that's ugly. It's a real mess. A lot of corrosion. A lot of rust. Oh, yeah. Oh. Rust. Ooh, this one's completely stuck. That's it. That's the one. Plenty of plate there. Or plenty of pads still. Let's see this one. Ooh. I gotta check this side, too. If it's dragging at all, it bugs me. It's not good. Severely worn pad. I need new pads and a new rotor. Fancy that. So I'm at Advanced Auto Parts in West Lebanon. And right back here is a box with my parts in them. I couldn't get here in time before they closed. So I called them and the guy said, hey, it's curbside pickup. I'll leave them outside for you. <laughs> so he did. And what's cool is he hid them and he told me where he was gonna hide them. So it, I was only here a couple minutes after it closed, but uh, fantastic. I am I was in full agreement, yes, please do that. And he did, I just picked him up. I'm thankful for the creativity. You know what's true? If you're gonna buy online, they should put a box out here, uh, like Home Depot has with the code. Put in the code, uh, pull your stuff out of the locker, and you can pick it up any time after hours. It's genius, we gotta get there. Anyway, very thankful uh, that the dude at Advanced Auto Parts helped me out and I can get my car back on the road and running tonight. Uh, I just got back from the store. I've never used CarQuest products before, but we're gonna give it a try. Uh, they looked pretty good. Reviews seemed okay online. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, so much prettier than what was in there, huh? Look at that, it's even got multicolor. Organic grease. Organic? What's that mean? I don't know if the hardware's any good. It, it looks good. So I got the platinum rotors. I got 25% discount uh, for setting up an account at Advanced Auto. So I got a really good price on all of this. It was almost 200 bucks. By the time I left the, uh, the online cart, it was down to 138 for two brand new rotors and full brake pads for the back. Pretty. So no, I didn't go slotted, high performance, anything. I just went pretty much OEM stuff. And uh, that's okay. I go OEM for one primary reason. This is a daily driver. It's not a race car. I'm not building it to be a race car. It's a daily driver. And uh, I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of money on making this something it's not. This will work. Especially since I live in Vermont. They look great. So I'll degrease this and then we'll get started to get it installed. All right, so we removed the caliper. Now we've got to remove the uh, caliper bracket holder and um, then we'll pull the rotor off. A little help from the hammer. Well, it looks like we need a Ratchet's too big. Box in. It's coming real slow. But it's coming. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah. Man, this quick little project turned big in a hurry. And now the sad thing is, I gotta tear this all back apart again in a couple of weeks. All right, this hunk of chunk of brackets off. Caliper's off. Rotor. Let me take. It's a Torx head. Oh yeah. T30 Torx. I suspect this is the first brake job this car's had. It's only got 35,000 on it. 
It's coming, just coming slow. There she goes. Man, this is just ugly. So again, I'm gonna slap this all back together so I can get my car back down on the ground and I can drive it. Ooh, look at that. That is just, <laughs> that's Vermont. And then uh, when I get a nice, long, lazy day, I'm gonna come up on this thing, scrub it, clean it, and make it pretty. But for now, we just gotta get back on the road. So I'm gonna go clean my rotors, degrease them, and then I'll slap it on. No matter how you put it on, you've always got a hole lined up. All right. This is the mud I was telling you about. This is a really good view of it. You can see the brake pad set right there, but it can't slide back or, or release from the rotor because there's this pile of cement behind it. And that's what happens every spring. The auto stores fill up with brake projects. Nasty, huh? So I'm gonna clean up this nasty caliper and I'm gonna slowly remove the hardware on it. I don't wanna completely just bend and destroy the hardware because I know it sounds weird, but I've damaged these before and I've cleaned up and reused an old one to get me through the job. So be careful with them. I wanna get that channel spotless. Nice and smooth, so everything lines up nice. I just want to paint everything, but I don't have time. All right, new hardware. Oh yeah, hardware fit really good, I'm impressed. the big 18 millimeters back in the way I took them out. I always debate on putting the grease on because does the grease just attract the dirt that stops the brakes from moving, the brake pads from moving? I need dry grease like motorcycle chain grease. Ooh, I got some of that. Maybe that would work with Molly. A little extra. So the torque spec on this is real tight. So this is Honda chain lube with Molly. I use it on my motorcycle and it's designed from dirt motorcycles uh, to keep dirt from gathering on your chain. Contains Molly and PTFE. Can't hurt. A little bit of hair just on the end. So there are two different brake pads. They actually are different. You got to pay attention. This one has the little tab on it that lets you know when your brake pads wore off. When the pad lining is gone, it will sing. Uh, and then this one doesn't have it and the rivets are a little different too. So this one goes on the inside. At least that's what it was like when I took it apart. So I'll put this one on the inside. Ta-da! And I'll put this one on the outside. Now I use an old brake pad, one that's preferably smooth, and a C-clamp, and I compress the uh, caliper piston back in so I can get it over top of the brake pads. But first. All right. Come on, brake. I don't think I've ever removed that. Oh, oh yeah, we got plenty. I have not topped this off. It's a little low, so I got some room as I compress those pads. It'll allow this fluid to come up a little bit. The brake pedal will probably feel even better when I'm done. See, Glimp. Is it big enough? I have a bigger C clamp if I need it. I'm gonna need it. It's just obnoxiously large, though. Look at that thing. Excellent. Nice and square, square as you can, as center as you can. No angles, no whammies and then just turn it in slowly. I'm gonna push this in and then go check the fluid level. All right, there's resistance there, so I stopped. I don't wanna go any further than that. If I have to, I will, but we're gonna test it. Let me go check first. No overflow risk on the master cylinder, we're good. So now what we gotta do is, did we push this in far enough to see if it fits over this? Dun, dun, dun. 
And the answer is, yes, we did. Sweet. Again, when you get to the bottom, as soon as it stops, stop squeezing. You don't want to press it in and force it to be stuck. All right, now I just need the little screws, the little bolts, sorry. Now I had the 18 back to the 14. I never try to over torque these. It's aluminum, cast aluminum. So go easy. I don't know what their torque spec is, but it's not like the big bracket. Just make them a little tight. Take some mechanical feel, but this side is done. We have brand new brake pads. We have brand new uh, rotor. The caliper felt really good when I pressed it in, so I'm confident, pretty confident it's not going to seize on me. Um, got brand new rotors. So this side's clean. Everything's moving so liquidy and nice. All this dirt is disgusting. Again, spring, we do a full and complete cleanup. I got to do the other side. By the way, I'm so shocked I didn't feel this. This is the rotor from the other side. It is massively warped. It's got grooves in it and ridges. It is ugly. A lot of rust, amazing corrosion. This caliper is no good. The high heat that was created may have damaged it or it was damaged already, but it's not going in easy. It's really bad. All right, we got new rotors, new brake pads. The caliper on the driver's side in the rear is fine. The caliper on this side is too tight. It's probably what actually brought it to smoking or to getting that hot. Uh, combination of things. Uh, it's possible that thing's been stuck for a long time. I just didn't know it. Um, so I need a new rear caliper. I just got to find one. Uh, I've only seen them online. I haven't seen them locally. I'm sure they could get me one, but they're not cheap, which is nice. But I'm tired. I'm going to park it, call it a night, and uh, we'll pick this up another time.